When I first met Jane in 2003, she had been teaching middle school for 15 years. Although she was comfortable teaching math, there was a new curriculum on the horizon, and word on the street was that this new curriculum was going to have a heavier focus not only on problem solving, but also teaching through problem solving. In her 15 years of teaching, Jane had never done either of these. So she decided she should get out in front of the new curriculum, learn something about problem solving, and start playing with it in her classroom. Jane knew three things about me. First, she knew that I liked problem solving. My research at the time was, in essence, on creativity in problem solving, and I had been doing some workshops for teachers in her school district on this topic. Second, Jane knew that I was working on my Ph.D., was out of the classroom, and therefore had nothing but spare time on my hands. And third, she knew my email address. I don't know how Jane knew any of these things, as I had never met or even heard of Jane. Nonetheless, one day in 2003, I received an email from Jane. Jane, hi, I'm interested in implementing problem solving in my grade 7-8 mathematics classroom. Can I get some help from you? Fantastic! I had been out of the classroom for a few years, and I was missing teaching. To me, this was an opportunity to not only get back into the classroom, but also do some problem-solving with students. Peter, I'd love to help. Why don't we have a meeting to discuss it? I can come to school tomorrow. What room are you in, and what time does school end? So the next day I showed up at Jane's door at 3.15 with a big smile on my face. This was going to be awesome. Jane, who had clearly worked with researchers before, was not as enthusiastic. Jane, look, before we start talking about problem solving, I want to get a few things straight. First, I don't want any of your glee and enthusiasm in here. I don't want to co-teach with you. I don't even want to co-plan with you. All I really wanted were some good problems that I could use in my grade 7-8 math classroom. I don't even know why we are having this meeting. This was not what I had been expecting. In fact, it was about as far from what I had been expecting as possible. But I would not be deterred, and after 15 minutes of discussion, we arrived at a tense agreement of sorts. I would give Jane good problems to try, and she, in return, would allow me to watch her implement them. But she had rules. Jane, first, you have to stay in that desk, pointing at a desk in the back corner of the room. You are not allowed to talk to the students, and you are definitely not allowed to talk to me. And so it was that we began our collaboration, of sorts. The first problem I gave Jane came from Lewis Carroll and was a problem I had used many times with my grade 8s and 9s. I knew that this was a good problem. The context was engaging, the answer was non-trivial, and it didn't require any sophisticated mathematics to solve. And my students, when I had used it with them, had enjoyed arguing over the various answers they arrived at. If six cats can kill six rats in six minutes, how many will be needed to kill 100 rats in 50 minutes? Lewis Carroll, 1880. So the next morning I sat in Jane's class and watched her write this problem up on the board for her students to solve. Before I tell you what happened next, let me review a few details. As mentioned, Jane had been teaching for 15 years, and until this day had never used problem-solving in her classroom. Her students sat in desks that were in rows with some of the rows put together to make student pairs. See figure I1, students in a traditional classroom work on a task, which can be found on the companion website. The students did not have assigned seats, and sat and worked with who they wanted. A typical lesson, Jane had told me, began with her going over homework. 